Hey guys, I'm here with Jason Haig Ellery, who started Big Finish Productions. He produces Doctor Who audios, as well as has directed some of the Stargate audios. Um, so, Jason, how did you start Big Finish? Well, uh, long story short, um, I produced a um, film, a science fiction film, back in about 94, which was called Shakedown, which was a Doctor Who spin-off. And, uh, People at the Sci-Fi Channel Europe really liked it, and they said, how would you like to come in and do a pilot for a television series? So that was amazing. So I said, great, I'll do that. And as part of uh, what we had to do, uh, we had to set up a production company. So I've, um, I've known Steve Moffat for about 20 odd years, and I was a huge fan of his from Press Gang, which was the series he did for ITV. Um, for children's ITV and um, when I was at university we always used to rush back to go and watch Press Gang which was a children's show but wasn't written for children it was written for adults and um, so I thought if I was going to have a production company I would name it after uh, an episode from Press Gang um, and uh, originally we were going to be called Page One, which is the first episode, but someone already had Page One Productions. Uh, then I looked at various other titles and we almost had, in fact, I found a logo not that long ago for Rock Solid, which was the last episode, or the second to last episode of uh, Season Two, so it was going to be Rock Solid Productions. But when I saw the logo come out, it just looked too much like porn. And um, having said that, Big Finish doesn't look much better. Um, but uh, so eventually we ended up with Big Finish, which was the end of season two. Um, so um, Steve uh, does slightly rib me for that. Um, <laughs> but uh, the. Um, so we started Big Finish then. Um, Sci Fi Channel never really happened. We went through two years' development in hell. Uh, with a script which was written by Paul Cornell, which someday we're going to do as something, I'm sure. Um, and we, uh, I came to the end of that, and Guy Russell came to me and said, do you know what, I think we can get Doctor Who on audio. I said, oh, OK. So I went after that, and because I already had a production company, it was already set up, it was already had an accountant, it already had everything in place. It just seemed obvious to just do it through Big Finish. That's great. And uh, speaking of Doctor Who, what's coming up this year in Doctor Who? Well, Audio that would be adventures? telling, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Yes, it would. <laughs> um, well, we've got, well, obviously at the moment we've got um, the, uh, the Tom Baker uh, series. Tom's finally come back to play the role again for Big Finish. And um, we're all incredibly excited. And uh, it's been an amazing experience working with Tom um, because uh, a lot of us grew up with Tom as their doctor um, and he's really enjoyed it absolutely been um, it's, I think it's been a bit of a revelation for him to come back to the role and play it again um, he did actually say and he has actually gone public with this he's, it's, I'm not saying something out of turn but he's actually said why wasn't I doing this years ago <laughs> which I would agree with him why wasn't he doing this years ago it's brilliant um, so we've got, um, we got um, we've actually I think we've recorded 16 more episodes with Tom so that's all done um, we've got two Stargate box sets coming out um, which um, I directed most of them by which I mean that I directed um, the elements which are in Los Angeles and then Lisa Bauman did the direction in um, the UK for the characters who recorded there. One of the big advantages of, of audio is that you can actually get an amazing cast together by recording them separately um, and melding them together later. And what we do, um, the traditional method of recording audio and radio plays is to get um, the actors in a room with foley and, um, you know, make noises in the background. So if someone's walking on gravel or, or coming in and closing the door, they go... You know, all that sort of stuff. And it, it just, it makes the noise, but it doesn't really fit. Whereas we do it more green screen, as it were. Whereas we just record the actors, and then we put all the effects behind it. So subsequently, a BBC drama, for example, will take about three days to edit. Whereas one of ours will take about six weeks. So it's a big difference in the editing. Um, so it sounds much greater depth. Um, 
And the point of that is the point of that is that we are, we're very used to taking different elements and joining them together. Um, so um, really excited about Stargate. Actually, it's some really good scripts, um, and uh, it's great having Claudia Black and uh, Michael Shanks back, and Claudia especially. I must admit. Absolutely amazing actress, and so much fun to work with. Um, the uh, back to Doctor Who. We well, we got Blake Seven, of course. We got uh, ongoing audio series of Blake Seven, which has been very, very successful. We've got some new books, Blake Seven books coming out. Um, we've got the main range of Doctor Who. Uh, we've got a oh, I can't talk about that yet. I haven't been agreed with the BBC. We've got a. Um, We've got a new series which Paul McGann's going to be doing of Doctor Who, which is going to be very special and very different, but can't say what. And it's actually going to be um, uh, a continuation from where it finished at the end of the the fourth series of uh, the Doctor and Lucy series. I don't know if you followed the Doctor and Lucy. Uh, I have not. Uh, Michael does. Michael? Michael's a well big done, Doctor Michael. Who audio. Good lad. Um, so, yes, at the end of that we had Sheridan dying and falling off a, um, and you know, I won't spoil it for anyone who hasn't heard it yet, but um, the wonderful Sheridan Smith who won the Olivier last year, and um, and if she doesn't win the Olivier this year, which I think is on Sunday, I would be really, really surprised, because she's brilliant. Um, but, um, yes, yeah, so uh, we've got returning villains. Um, we've announced that within the Tom Baker series, we've got the master coming back. Um, and uh, Jeffrey Beavers is playing the master. Um, and yeah, no, I'm, it, there's a lot of good stuff coming up. Um, I think, um, I wish I could tell you more actually, but a lot of the stuff we're not allowed to release yet. Oh, I wish you could tell us more too. <laughs> Um, speaking of previous doctors coming back, yes. what's it like working with Paul McGann? Paul's wonderful, um, mainly because um, he's got uh, a very sly sense of humour, and uh, as you probably realise from interviewing him, we'll put a couple of digs in, um, but he's, um, he's got that scouse humour. Um, he's also an amazing actor, obviously, and uh, he brings so much out of the character. And he, he likes a dark doctor. Mm -hmm. And um, we put him through the ring in the last couple of seasons on the, the audio series with Lucy. And, um, which is why when we brought him back into the main range, we gave him a, you know, a new companion with Mary Shelley um, and brought something different out. Um, but I think it's um, what we've got planned for him. It's very dark, and I think he's going to really enjoy it because he likes a bit of darkness. <laughs> um, it's his, I think he's got some Irish heritage in him, so it's, it's the Irish soul <laughs> of him. Um, as do I. But um, I think when he first came back, we were writing for the Doctor as seen in the television movie, and of course, Paul wasn't really the Doctor until around about the last. 30, 35 minutes of the film mm -hmm. because he was going, first of all it was Sylvester, and then he was going through the re regeneration uh, stage and then he was being his doctor mm -hmm. as it were and it's very little to base stuff on so he wrote the first series as the doctor, it's funny I think Mark Gatiss actually said this, he wrote his episode as um, Paul's doctor, just writing it for the doctor and then um, he, uh, what we'd learned from that first series with Paul um, was about him, really. And then we started writing for him. So um, more than any other Doctor, it's probably been influenced by the actor. Um, because with, say, Peter or Sylvester, you've got so much uh, material from the television which actually educates you as to where you should be placing him. And that's the exciting thing we've always had with uh, with Paul's Doctor is that we can take that character into a lot of different places because um, who knows if we're wrong if you see <laughs> what I mean because there was so little material to base it on that we can go into different directions and things like uh, you know the um, like Neverland and um, and uh, Zagreus you know took the Doctor in a different direction um, and now with the, the Doctor and Lucy stories for those four seasons we've seen a, a different side to what uh, Paul can do and um, no it's going to be very interesting to see what we get out of him going forward. What is your favorite um, big finish audio story you've done? Do you have a, a favorite and it doesn't necessarily <laughs> have to be Doctor Who, it can be any big yeah, finish story you've yeah. done. That is difficult actually. Well I would say from Doctor Who 
I would say probably Spare Parts or Neverland. Spare Parts because it's actually a um, very complicated story, actually, but it, it's told in a very simpli simplistic way. It's about the death of... Um, of a civilization, basically, and um, it's done so well, it's written so well um, that um, you know you 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 f can feel the pain they're all in. And uh, Gary did a brilliant do job of directing it, and um, yeah, so it's it's sort of like watching. I hate to say, it's sort of like watching someone die of cancer almost, because you see that the whole of the um, the civilization atrophying, 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 atrophying. Mm, okay, G diminishing. How's that for a change of word? Um, and um, as I said, Neverland, because I think it's the nearest thing we've ever done to Lord of the Rings, to be honest, um, because it's a complete epic. Uh, to tell you how big an epic it is, we had to cut all the. Um, all the uh, end of episodes, all the title music, everything off, just to get it onto two discs. So it's 84 minutes on one and 84 minutes on another, and the only way we could just about get them on, squeeze them on, is to have an opening title sequence, which is about that long, and just go through and end. So it's more like a movie. It's the nearest thing we've done to an epic movie. And there's bits which make the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. Um, when when Paul turns around at the end of it and says, I am Zagreus, you know, I go, woo, it's very exciting. Um, so, yes, there's, there's, there's that. But I've also been very excited by what we've been doing recently. Um, Lisa Greenwood, as, um, as Flick, for example, uh, her coming in with uh, a new companion for Colin Baker, that's been a breath of fresh air. It's been really good to do something different. Um, and that's the advantage of the format, I think, that you can constantly change um, what we're doing, the different locations, the different time zones, obviously. Um, but also, you can shake it up a bit by introducing new companions, um, not just from the television series, but also create your own. Um, and you go on from there. That's great. And um, our last question is, one of the goals of ICON is to encourage interest in the sciences through science mm. fiction. And um, working with audio stories like Doctor Who and Stargate, um, you get to uh, hear about all of these pieces of technology that don't actually exist. Yes. So what are your, what are you most impressed with that oh, has come about and what are you excited for for the future as far as uh, science, I guess? Um, I'm endlessly impressed by my Blackberry to be frank, because this, um, I don't know how I existed before this came around. And since they brought out the torch, whereby I get to use a keyboard and also move things around a screen, it's amazing. Uh, so that's a big plug for BlackBerry. Um, they should be paying me for that. Um, but um, going forward, I think, you know, it's amazing how easily accessible so many things have been over the last few years. I think um, one of the biggest problems we've got, and it's for small companies like ourselves, is illegal downloading. And I hope at some point a bit more responsibility would be taken by the um, service providers for illegal downloading, because there's a lot of sites out there, as you know. Mm -hmm. Now, one very famously has been brought down recently, um, and uh, and the guy put him arrested over in New Zealand. I've forgotten the name of the guy, but um, but uh, and I'm not saying that with the big corporate hat on because uh, the reality is we've we've seen a considerable drop in sales over the last few years, and yet we have um, so many thousands of people um, on our message boards, thousands of people um, joining us on Facebook. We know there's a lot of people out there who just don't pay. You know, and that's long term. It's a problem for everybody, and it sounds like I'm preaching here, but it is a consequence. I mean, we've basically it got to the point where a couple of our series have already gone. So Saffron Steel, for example, was a series that we all loved doing, but it had to go because we couldn't sell enough. Um, yet it was incredibly popular. There was a lot of interest in it, 
you know, loads of people were talking about it, so we know there was a lot of people illegally downloading it, but just, you know. So what we're trying to do now is find ways and means to make it easier on everyone. Um, and um, just done a deal with iTunes, mm -hmm. and we've just done a deal, um, and also we do sales whereby people can come to the website and buy stuff cheaper. So there you go. So that's me plugging. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>